Hi, good day. So I will be a lab demonstrator of the uh, refrigeration lab uh, that you all will be doing in the coming weeks. Right? So the concept of refrigeration is you would have a warm environment and you want to cool down this warm environment. Right? So that's the entire concept of refrigeration. So how you do this usually is you have a refrigerant, which in our case is ammonia 134A, um, and you cool down this refrigerant to a temperature that is lower than the environment. And then you expose the refrigerant to the environment. And because there's a temperature gradient for the warm environment and the cold refrigerant, the energy moves from the warm environment into the cold um, refrigerant. Right? And so you effectively heat up the refrigerant and the and the room itself, the, the environment gets cooler. Right? So this is a, a lab unit to demonstrate the refrigeration cycle, right? So oh, so the refrigeration cycle is based around getting the refrigerant to a cold temperature and exposing it to the warm environment, right? Mm -hmm. So in this setup, we have four main components, right? A compressor. A compressor, the purpose of a compressor is to um, increase the pressure and temperature of, a, of, a, of the refrigerant. The condenser, which is to reduce the temperature, of a, which is used to reduce the temperature of things. A uh, throttle valve, which is used to increase the, um, the pressure, in, reduce the pressure of something by expanding it out. Uh, reduce the pressure and temperature. And then the evaporator, which in our case is something used to um, is used used to mimic the warm environment. So I'll explain that a little bit later. Right? So let's go through the cycle uh, in by thinking about it from the perspective of the refrigerant, right? So it's a closed cycle. That means the all, the refrigerant in the cycle stays within the cycle. There is no refrigerant. You don't have to discard the refrigerant after it goes through the cycle. Right? So the refrigerant is constantly going through the cycle. Right? So you can start anywhere in the cycle and it doesn't make a difference. Right? So for all, you usually start before the compressor, so that's where we'll start. Right? So the refrigerant, you think about it, uh, before the compressor is in what we call a superheated state, right? which means it is all V1. Right? So the, the compressor has completely beyond the refrigerant has completely boiled out effectively and it's in a superheated state, right? So it goes into the compressor and the compressor compresses it and increases the pressure and the temperature. So uh, and it's here where the work is done to the work is done to the refrigerant. Right? So this is your work input into the system usually. Um, so the refrigerant goes through the compressor and the compressor increases the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant. After the compressor, it goes into the condenser. The purpose of the condenser, as we said before, is to reduce the temperature of the, of the refrigerant. It does this by passing water over the, um, it, I think it's, it's water in our case, and it pa passes water over it constantly, and it, the water extracts heat from the, from the, um, from the refrigerant and it cools down the refrigerant, right? So over here you have a flow meter and this flow meter controls how much, um, how much cooling water is passing through the condenser. So if you increase the amount of cooling water, pass, the flow rate of the cooling water passing through the condenser, you will therefore increase the rate of heat um, absorption from the refrigerant. And therefore, effectively what you're doing is you're cooling down the refrigerant a lot faster. So the temperature gradient from before the compressor, before the condenser to after the condenser will be greater for, for greater flow rate and vice versa. If you reduce the flow rate, you'll, you won't extract as much heat and therefore the temperature outside, um, coming out of the, um, the condenser will be higher. Okay? So that's the purpose of the condenser. The purpose of the condenser is to reduce the heat of the refrigerant um, in a way that the pressure remains constant. Yeah. Um, after the condenser, it goes through a flow meter. So this is just to find the mass flow rate, and you'll need this for some air calculation. And after this, it goes into the throttle valve. 
So the first object we're talking about is the expand the expand the refrigerant, which is effectively just decrease any pressure. Is it decreasing? Decreasing the pressure, right? In decreasing the pressure, you also decrease the temperature. So, okay. uh, this is supposed to be an uh, isentropic process. It's basically the opposite of, uh, of a compressor. If a compressor increases the temperature and pressure, this decreases the temperature and pressure. Okay. So, so you had a, a superheated thing, superheated refrigerant, and once you get it, increase the temperature. After it increases the temperature, it decreases the temperature, and then it decreases the temperature again. So over here, you have a relatively cold refrigerant, right? And it's here that you usually ex it's here that you would expose it to a warm environment, right? In our case, if if we just expose it to the warm environment, the environment would um would take the energy and cool down. But we want to be able to measure the performance of the cycle, right? That's the whole purpose of it. We want to be able to measure the performance of the cycle. The performance of the cycle is related to the, the refrigeration effect, right? So it's how much heat you take out of the of the of the system, right? So the refrigerating effect. So after here you would usually expose it to the warm environment. Um, but instead we will heat up the refrigerant. So instead of exposing the refrigerant to a warm environment, we heat it up ourselves and we measure this I as you can see it's insulated, right? Mm -hmm. So is not exposed to the environment, but we are heating it up ourselves, and we will measure the heat that we add that we added in, in watts in terms of joules of heat added per second. Watts, right? So we, we usually over here you would have the environment, right? the warm environment, that you would expose the cold refrigerant to. Instead, you you want to insulate it from the environment and only add heat that you can measure, so you can measure the refrigeration effect. If it didn't have a heater in here, and you, you just had it exposed, you would just have the heat being lost in the environment, which is what usually what you want, right? You want it to expose to the warm. So instead we insulate it and, and heat it up ourselves, so we can measure the heat refrigeration effect, right? And after the refrigeration effect, the, the, the vapor. So it was in a superheated state here, you increase the temperature and pressure, so, um, then you cool it down, you cool it down, and over here it would be in a liquid state, right? After the condenser, it would be in a liquid state. Um, over here, it would be in a semi-liquid state. And over here, after this, after the evaporator, the evaporator usually boils out all the water, and boils out all, all the um, refrigerant, so it gets it to a superheated state, and then it returns to the compressor, right? So that's the basic rundown of the entire cycle, right? So what is the purpose of the lab? The purpose of the lab is to measure the coefficient of performance of the of the cycle of the refrigeration cycle, right? So the coefficient of performance is defined as the ratio of the useful work output over the work input that you have to put into the system. Right? So what is the useful work output? Right? So we discussed it earlier is the refrigeration effect, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be how when you expose the refrigerant to the warm environment, how much energy the warm environment loses to the refrigerant, right? As a as useful work output, right? So that is the numerator, right? Of the coefficient of the work. And then what is your work input into the system? What, what work do you have to put into the system to get that refrigeration effect in the end? That, the, if you think about the condenser, the condenser doesn't have anything um, to work input. The throttle valve is a mechanical system, it doesn't have any work input. The evaporator is a work output. The only thing that has a work input is the compressor. Okay? So the compressor has a work input. And so the compressor is, is um, run through the mains, right? So electrical. Okay? So if you have the, the power and the, the, the the power rate of the, the compressor, you can you have the how much work input you put into the system, right? So that's one way to measure the the coefficient of performance, right? How much um how much refrigeration effect you have and what over the electrical input to the compressor, right? But if you think about it, that is not a hundred percent the case because 
after he, after he powered the compressor electrically, there are a lot of losses that go on from it being in the mains electrically to it produce a mechanical wood in the compressor. Right? So another way to, um, to, to define the coefficient of performance is the useful wood output over the input the input the work the shaft of the compressor does all over, rather than the electrical input. Right? So how do we measure the, the work that the shaft of the compressor does? Because right? that's the only real mechanical work that we care about, right? Um, so the um, power of a shaft is defined as the torque by the angular velocity, right? So we have two tools here to measure the torque. We have a dynamometer, which measures the, which measures the torque, and we have a tachometer, which measures the, the um, revolutions per minute, right? So if you want to convert that to radians per second, if you multiply those two, you will get the torque, the, um, the power of the shaft of the compressor. Right? But, so that's another way of defining the coefficient of performance. Right? The useful work output of the, um, which you can measure by the the electrical input to the heater the evaporator over the in the shaft work, the shaft work of the compressor. Right? But that is also slightly flawed, right? So if you think about it, if you were to run the compressor by itself, the compressor has friction within it due to many things, fluid friction because it has a um, a refrigerant flowing through it and bare infection, a few, many things, right? Um, so the compressor, without anything in it, would require some torque to run, right? So what we, what we will do is we will, us the lab demonstrator, will give you uh, uh, the, 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 the force that the, the Compressor requires to run without any, without any, and that would be. So if you subtract that, you would effectively get the work required to only compress the refrigerant. Right? So no, no energy loss to friction or anything. Right? So those are three ways of defining your coefficient of performance. So all, all of them. Your useful work output is the is the energy that um, you use to heat up your refrigerant and the evaporator. Right? And this is this is analogous to the to exposing a refrigerant to a warm environment, right? Um, so that's always your useful work output over the input to the system, which could either be electrical input to the motor of the compressor, the shaft, um, the shaft um, power of the compressor or the shaft power of the compressor minus the frictional losses. Right? So using that, we should be able to take all the readings that we need to do the calculation for. Right? So that's all.